good evening everyone and at the outset i would like to thank all of you for taking our time from a monday today i'm sure uh, a lot of you are exhausted from your uh, day to day activities and practice uh, but this is going to be very very insightful and uh, as you know the topic today we're going to talk about uh, you know, tackling diversity with the right combination and uh, to join us today and give us more insights about this is uh, dr sanjay kalra i think uh, a name that needs no introduction uh, it's it's not fair for me to introduce somebody who has a wikipedia page on him and uh, if, if you google i think there are at least 10 pages where only his name will come so welcome so much uh, dr sanjay kalra for uh, today's discussion thank you anthony uh when we talk of diabetes and and uh, you know dr kalra i think uh, so you wrote about this uh, more than a decade ago uh, and uh, you know it was a wonderful review where you brought out brought to light the rising pandemic of diabetes and obesity together and you uh, spoke about various complications that come with it so uh, you know we'll talk about what has changed in the decade but uh, if we go back to the time when you you know started this concept and wrote about this what are some clinical complexities that you still see because today we see that you know the whole world is moving towards obesity management um, and uh, diabetes still stays of course the number one uh, ncd that we need to tackle so uh, how complex is it and you know uh, what are your thoughts on it it is becoming more and more complex uh, but you know one other complexity dr manthan that is that even if you are tired on a monday evening after a busy opd after a busy day at work it actually that serves as a stimulus to become more enthusiastic more energetic so there is this concept of physics it's newton's law each and every action has an equal and opposite reaction so if the action or the experience is being tired being lethargic Uh, being you know drained out because of your work pressures at work the opposite is going to happen the opposite is that when you join a talk show like this especially with so many people from across the country then suddenly you become enthused and uh, energetic so th that's the way to go about it uh, complexity is have increased uh, about 12 years ago we wrote an editorial where we said that the endocrinologist the diabetologist of the future will be a bariatric physician uh, i did not know at that time what's going to happen 10 12 years ago but but we wrote it you know so maybe goddess saraswati would have been on our pen at that time we wrote it along with dr matthew john from trivandrum and that is actually happening today so even earlier we had diabetes and obesity together that was diabetes but now the percentage has increased markedly uh, when we look at the icmr indiab data icmr indiab 17 we find that the prevalence of dysglycemia in the country is around 25% that of uh, generalized obesity is around uh, 30% and just to remember the name name so the, the number so that you don't find it easy you just remember the word doha doha is the capital of qatar so d for dysglycemia 25% o for obesity generalized obesity 30% h for hypertension 35% and a for abdominal obesity 40% so this is the prevalence of uh, obesity and diabetes together and in some states like kerala and goa it, it goes up to nearly 50% this is complexity in terms of the challenge that we face complexity in in terms of what we can do so if we do a swoc analysis for example the challenge the threat is that this is there the threat is that it's going to increase it's not coming down the weight of the indian reference man the indian reference woman is going up every 5 years they increase by 5 kg so our weights are going to go up diabetes prevalence is going to go up especially in the rural areas but the opportunity and strength is that we can do something about this but then even then dr manthan there's a complexity there we have so many tools available with us sometimes we get confused about what to do what not to do so that's another challenge that we have another complexity Right. you know you know very very well said and very well put uh, the aspect of endocrinology moving towards bariatric and i think uh, doha is our our first take home for today uh, we uh, see from advancement perspective right like you said a decade ago we had probably not envisioned 
all these molecules that are now coming in for weight loss and uh, you know initially we thought there'll be one uh, glp1 analog coming in now there are multiple uh, which are coming in there are dual ones that people are trying and there is a lot of research is going on in obesity as as a disease it's recognized it came in that icd classification and now a lot of uh, pharmacotherapy efforts are happening uh, towards that space so uh, with these advancements uh, you know is the approach changing where we were earlier you know talking about <clears throat> lifestyle talking more about uh, uh, labeling people you know who were obese as somebody who's lazy and uh, we had a focus that okay people just need to uh, now will probably just pop a pill or take an injection or take a weekly medication so that they can all come in weight and uh, that will be, remain the cornerstone now of obesity management so no extreme is good but yes changes are occurring so one is the way we think about obesity earlier we used to think that all obesity is because of a mismatch between dietary intake and energy expenditure and everyone obese would be classified or labeled as being lazy and lethargic uh, we understand now that is not true uh, i myself live with obesity i try my best but i am not able to get my weight down below a particular level so uh, so that is one change we understand that obesity is much more than dietary intake and energy expenditure the second thing is that while we are managing diabetes we understand that we have to manage glucose and weight together so there is something known as the kg a1c paradox this used to hold true in uh, with conventional therapy when you try to bring the hb a1c down with conventional therapy you are doing so because you want to improve long term cv outcomes but as the a1c comes down the kg would go up the weight would go up with uh, the older insulins with the older sulfonylureas with pyglitazone and you would end up worsening cv outcomes so it would be a catch 22 situation it's like a dog running after its own tail or like you running on a treadmill you are not reaching anywhere the speed is great but the velocity is zero so that used to be the case earlier kg a1c paradox now we do have drugs like you rightfully mentioned we have drugs which are able to bring down the weight and the uh, hb1c together so that is a change another kg a1c paradox is that with some of the drugs not all with some of the drugs that we use for example uh, let's take uh, liraglutide or semaglutide the kg a1c paradox is that the dose required for a1c reduction in people with diabetes is less the dose required for kg reduction in people without diabetes is more so people with two comorbid diseases diabetes and obesity require lesser doses while a person with just a single disease that's obesity requires a higher dose that's another paradox this hasn't this doesn't hold true for tirzepatide though so these are some other complexities that are coming up the nice thing at least is that we are able we are now understanding what the disease is we are understanding it's not always the individual's fault and then uh, we do have drugs now which we can offer we we have uh, or, uh, options to share with our patients right i think uh, you know on on that note where we talk of all these advancements in therapy and even if we look at data that comes in right very promising data and like you said of the kg a1c paradox all these drugs are now looking at uh, favorable cv outcomes as well uh, being tried in various other things and you know uh, <laughs> other therapies as well with mash and alzheimers lot of research happening with them in various spaces uh, however once we you know look at starting therapies like these right and uh, <clears throat> when we still want to maintain focus either on their lifestyle changes or on the other parameters that you spoke about right their expenditure versus dietary intake etc with these therapies how sustainable is you know the change both in a1c as well as in terms of uh, kg paradox without doing each of these and are we looking at patients continuing this for a long time because we saw a lot of data that comes in that the moment you stop you know there is again uh, a change that sets in and you might need a sustainable dose uh, for a much longer time and we have more and more data that will come in over the years but uh, what do you feel like on that so these are really important questions both from a physician's perspective but also from a patient's perspective and the public perspective the family wants to know the nation wants to know what's going on what's not going to uh, going on so let's uh, maybe answer this in uh, le le let me answer it in three ways or three buckets the first uh, bucket or the first theme is 
the treatment of obesity the cornerstone of treatment is behavioral therapy intensive behavioral therapy now some people have a definition for intensive others don't like the american association of pediatrics gives a definition of intensive behavioral therapy based upon the number of hours that you will spend with a particular patient if you were to follow that definition i think the entire indian healthcare ecosystem would collapse i mean how many patients can you sit with for one hour a day we don't have enough trained manpower the other googly is that if it's intensive behavioral therapy then who's qualified to give the behavioral therapy to offer it is it me am i a qualified behavioral psychologist no am i experienced yes i have got experience on the job does it qualify me i hope so but the rehabilitation council of india may have a different opinion they may say that you need a qualified psychotherapist but then how many psychotherapists do we have in the country clinical how many of them want to remain in clinical jobs they all join the hr uh, firms and they, and they join the multinationals even if they were to come into health are they trained in obesity they may be trained in behavioral therapy but specifically for obesity no they are not trained so the the first sentence is that behavioral therapy is the cornerstone of obesity management and we need it and we have to have uh, out of the box indigenous ways of we need to empower all of ourselves to learn what behavioral therapy or motivational therapy is we call this motivational therapeutics this is very important from a diabetes and obesity a chronic care perspective and because we are not enough boots on the ground not enough stethoscopes in the clinics we take help from our digital partners for motivational therapeutics once you've got that in place then when we add the diet and exercise and medication it does work so now we come to the question is it sustainable sustainable will come later the first thing is starting you cannot start until you have that intensive behavioral therapy uh, system in place and for that like we've mentioned very politely very diplomatically you need qualified and trained staff so you need manpower woman power which is educated qualified trained and experienced the uh, urdu is actually quite uh, poetic uh, quite uh, interesting so taleem that is education uh then tajurba which is edu which is experience tarbiyat which is expertise so taleem bhi chahiye tajurba bhi chahiye tarbiyat bhi chahiye and the fourth is tehzeeb which is the way in which we speak the way in which we deal with someone who is living with obesity you can't stigmatize the patient at the same time you can't do too much of beating around the bush you finally have to catch the bull by the horns and this uh, obesity is a very diabetes is a very slippery hill to catch let me tell you uski english to aur bhi mazedar hai dr mantan ye bahut fislau bam machli hai it's a very slippery hill to catch so uh, that is it uh, all these things are challenges ye hua pehla answer now the second part is what do we do about it if you want sustainability you started you want it to be sustainable you it can be sustainable actually it can be sensible also provided that you counsel the patient so let's do it in black and white black and white these are acronyms an acronym is you know like let's say you say uh, maybe uh, ff is fitter fly so so that's an acronym the acronym is you already have a word in the english language and you create an acronym out of that so we do black and white or white and black white is for the disease state so white dr mehta would mean that i tell my patient why and how obesity has occurred and has reached this level w for why h for how okay. i is for interventions these are the following interventions we have available for obesity non pharmacological pharmacological and invasive or interventional surgical t is for trajectory this is one what, what is going to happen if we do not choose any of these interventions this is what may happen if we choose whatever interventions we are offering so this is about the disease state and even stopping the progress of obesity if someone says i have been gaining 2 kg every month we stop that we keep the patient where he or she is that is also a success it's a therapeutic success e is for expectation setting so we are at white why and how of the disease i for interventions 
T for the trajectory, expected trajectory. E is for expectation setting. Now, if someone says in one month, I want to lose 20 kg, uh, that is not going to happen. And it shouldn't happen also because the side effects that will come in, like maybe uh, cholelithiasis, gallstones will develop, or weakness, malnutrition, these are uh, not welcome. So E is for expectation setting, but then E is also for encouragement. OK, I think a reasonable idea is that we lose 2 to 3 kg a month. But I am there with you. And uh, it's a marathon that we are going to run. It's not a 100 meter race. So so that's the disease, white. Uh, but we said uh, black and white. So black, Dr. Manthan, brings me to the third part of my answer. Black is when you're doing a medication or intervention counseling. So let us say we are talking about a particular drug like GLP-1 receptor agonist or maybe dual agonist, which we are going to use for the management of diabetes. Black is B for benefits. What are the potential benefits? How much? What is expected? L is for limitations. Now, no matter how much of medicine I'm, uh, I use for diabetes, diabetes, I'm not going to look like Dr. Mehta, and I'm certainly not going to get a uh, uh, you know, uh, crop of hair like him. So that is limitations. A is for adverse events, which may be possible. So these are the possible adverse events. Yes, they can occur. This is how we will mitigate them. C is for cost. What's the cost of the medicine or the intervention? And D, uh, K is for knowledge. What is the knowledge required? So for example, with an injectable, the knowledge required is uh, injection technique, right? And for uh, maybe a tablet, then knowledge required would be what time of the day to take it and with how much water to consume the tablet. So uh, this is a long answer, actually, Dr. Mehta, to a very short question that you asked. Uh, I think uh, very, very well summarized and uh, quite uh, black and white. And that leads me to two questions further within that element. One is you touched upon the element of cost, right? And all these therapies come at a, at a significant cost. And then uh, you also touched upon the aspect that you need trained behavioral therapy, therapists, experts, or digital therapy partners to you know help them navigate this path and this journey well. Uh, and you also spoke about expectation setting in, in the white bit. So I'm just going to pick up something from the white and something from the black about you know the cost and then the expectation setting with the patient about you know an expensive therapy added on with a, a digital therapy, which again adds some cost to it. Uh, and then you know how do you manage the entire thing saying, you know, I they are probably already distressed with their you know diabetes, and I'm struggling to manage both these elements. Now you're making me heavy on the pocket as well, and you expect me to you know play an equal role now uh, with the digital partners, go through an intensive behavior therapy in some way as well, where I thought that you know this medication will be a quick fix. So how do we look at that? So multiple, multiple ways of explaining, and that is the beauty of uh, motivational therapeutics. There is no single model uh, that you can use to help in motivation. Uh, but uh, there is something known as the MOC or COM model. M is for motivation, O is for opportunity, and C is for capability. But some of the things that we do to directly answer your question, you can talk, you can use analogies or metaphors. So the analogy I would use would be the laptop or the smartphone that each almost everybody has that is hardware so that's like us giving you a glp1 analog tablet or an injection the mobile phone that you buy whether it is ten thousand rupees worth or whether one lakh rupees worth it is of no value until you put software into it the laptop that you buy is of no value until you put software into it that software is what you're going to get from motivational therapeutics from the behavioral psychologist from digital therapeutics. So that is essential. Once you do that, once you put the right software, the right apps into your phone, then you get the beauty of whatever of uh, the instrument that you've bought. So then the beauty of these medicines will uh, come out. You will see, you will see yourself blooming. So that's one thing to explain to them why support is required. For a younger patient, you might want to say the same way you go for tuition. You have physics books online, you have chemistry books online, but you need a teacher to help you understand. So that's why you need a coach, a guide, uh, a rehber, a humsafar, a murshid. You need someone to help you uh, navigate this journey with obesity. 
So that's one way of explaining. When it comes to cost specifically, we tell them that yes, the cost of managing obesity is high, agreed. But the cost of managing complications of obesity is much, much higher. Uh, then uh, you, you reach out to proverbs like a stitch in time saves nine or penny wise pound foolish. For so many years of my professional career, I struggled to find a Hindi equivalent for penny wise pound foolish. And uh, after many years, I found an Urdu proverb, which is Paise bachao, asharfiyan lutao. Save pesas and end up spending gold coins. So that's the way you explain. Another way of explaining is you can bring religion into the picture. So uh, this is my all-time favorite. I would like to thank Dr. Lok Gupta, who is a senior physician from Gorakhpur in Uttar Pradesh. So what he uh, taught me to teach my patients was that uh, obesity management is like Ganga Jal. Now, if you take a bath in the Ganga, you are absolved of all sins. So if we manage obesity in a timely manner, we are absolved of all sins. We will not get complications. On the other hand, in a North Indian culture, supposing someone is on his or her death, deathbed, and then if the family members put Ganga Jal into the person's mouth, it means they have given up on him or her. It means uh, you are about to attain Sadgati, ho hopefully. So uh, obesity management is like Ganga Jal. If done in a timely manner, it absolves you of all sins and complications. But if left till too late, it is actually a death knell. Another favorite that we have is from uh, Mata Vaishno Devi, which is we are Northwest India. So we ask our patients, you know, so do you worship Vaishno Devi? The answer is yes. So what do you think she did? Uh, a Rakshas, a demon went after her. Did she succumb to the demon? Did she lay down her arms? The answer is no, she fought. Uh, when she was not strong, when she was weak, she went into the Garab June and she hid for nine months. When she came out, she came out with all uh, guns blazing and not with one or two arms, with eight. Not with one or two weapons, with eight. That's what we'll do in obesity. We'll fight the demon that is obesity and we'll fight it with multiple weapons, whatever is required. If we cannot manage with one particular drug, we'll add another one or we'll substitute. So these are some ways in which we uh, motivate our patients to be aggressive against obesity, to overcome obesity. Right. I think wonderful. A uh, lot of examples that a lot of us can relate to and probably utilize uh, in our things as well, you know, because there's a constant uh, question that comes from most sides on how do we motivate the patient and how do we explain the patient in a way which they will understand. We try to explain all the scientific rationale behind it, how it prevents complications, but, uh, you know, to get to something which touches their heart and soul and then they understand it in the best possible way. I think this is quite helpful. Uh, this also takes me to, I think, one of your favorite uh, topics, which I've heard you talk many of times about is the Maslow's hierarchy of needs in, in diabetes management, right? And uh, for diabetes and now with digital therapy, where would you place, you know, digital therapy, motivational therapy and all these advanced tools that we now have available in that hierarchy of needs, in that pyramid? Where do you see this? So you just use the word soul and heart. And actually, soul sickness, S-O-U-L, not the S-O-L-E of the foot. Of course, S-O-L-E of the foot, soul sickness does occur in diabetes. You have diabetic mm -hmm. foot. But uh, soul, S-O-U-L, soul sickness is uh, something that is a very important part of obesity presentation and the astute clinician the astute therapist should be able to diagnose that to screen and diagnose soul health screen uh, for soul health diagnose soul sickness and then manage it properly uh, where do we place it we place it throughout the uh, hierarchy throughout the continuum everyone with mild obesity needs behavioral therapy they may not need medication they certainly will not need surgery People in the middle of the spectrum will need medication, but the medication is not going to occur without motivational therapeutics, without motivational therapy. And if you are lucky enough to be in face-to-face uh, -face contact with a therapist, you know, every day of the week, every week of the month, that's fine. Otherwise, usually digital support will be required. People who have very severe uh, obesity, they will require surgery. They will also require medication before and after surgery. And they need that soul therapy, S-O-U-L therapy, even more. They need the motivational therapy. So uh, now, now 
suddenly you see the challenges come up. It's not that we just need educated, trained, uh, experienced healthcare professionals, whether they are psychologists or endocrinologists or a team. You need people who are able to handle mild, moderate, and severe obesity, all the unique needs. Now, all this, uh, for all this, a uh, lot of experience is required. You have to learn on the job. And uh, that is part of what we are doing today, I guess. We are all learning from each other. Uh, but uh, to answer, and everyone needs it. Some people may need more of hand holding, others may need less, but everyone does need. I think uh, well put, you know, that people at all ends of the spectrum need maybe in, in varying capacities. Uh, when it comes to behavior change, and you know, a lot, even in spite of the therapy, a lot is dependent on the patient uh, when it comes to changing their behavior and them seeing relevance in it. And we see that uh, compliance to both the elements, compliance to the pharmacotherapy, either due to the cost or the side effects. And we see a lot of them, you know, we lose them to follow up or they become non-compliant for varied reasons. Uh, similar is with, you know, digital therapies, right? They will probably be convinced when you explain with such wonderful examples that maybe I need it, you know, that uh, my doctor is telling me about it. So this is, this must be important. They start with it uh, and can be two scenarios. One, they see a significant effect, a positive effect of the therapy and, you know, uh, and then give up because they're like, okay, I've achieved it. I wanted that 5, 10 kg loss and I got it in 45 days, 50 days and I'm great with it. Uh, there are others who are, you know, not very, very compliant, uh, follow things once in a while and then don't end up with the outcomes or the goals that they as well as the doctor had in mind. And then we again see that, that compliance falls. So, uh, you know, we, 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 that intensivity doesn't remain at, at both ends of the spectrum. And that is a challenge which comes with all these aspects. And there, uh, any take on that, you know, how do we navigate that or what is one way in which we can help people stay motivated, stay compliant and uh, help them in the best way. So we have to understand that this is a part and parcel of life. There is no journey in life, no journey, which is always going to be a smooth road. So there are always going to be ups and downs. There will be twists and turns. So the first thing is to accept that this is going to happen. The second thing is when it happens, let it happen. That's fine. Let it happen for a short period of time. Everyone needs a break. Everyone needs time off. It's just that if you do it in a planned manner, then things are better. So you might uh, share with your patient, okay, let's have a cheat day this Sunday. That's a planned structured day. Let's have a drug holiday. This is called pragmatic prescription. The tablet costs 300 rupees a day. Uh, it is expensive. It hurts. Okay. So instead of stopping it suddenly, uh, why don't you just make it five days a week? On Monday, Tuesday, as it is, you're so busy at work, you don't have time for lunch. So we can skip the Monday, Tuesday and see what happens. But Saturday, Sunday, you are surrounded by so many tasty foods and uh, foodstuffs. So make sure you don't skip your tablet on Saturday, Sunday. That's pragmatic prescription. Pragmatic prescription can work for hand-holding and digital therapeutics as well for motivation. So that is that, okay, we have uh, scheduled a once weekly coaching call or a once weekly counseling call. But uh, the next two weeks, you will be out with your friends. Uh, maybe you're going uh, to a beach or a mountain destination. So let's sh schedule one talk, one meeting just before you leave, two days before you board your flight. And then you can take an off for two weeks. We'll do it when you come back. That's also pragmatic prescription. So uh, just uh, flow with the current many times. If, however, you see that something is happening which is life-threatening, limb-threatening, organ-threatening, then uh, the therapist should sort of... Uh, put his or her foot down and explain to the patient, you know, I think that you're going off track now. And this can cause a casualty. There can be an accident, like whatever kind of a biomedical accident. Let's, uh, let's come back on track. The other thing is also to be aware of changes in one's lifestyle or life circumstances. So suddenly somebody got upset with life. There was a major stress, a change of profession, change in the family. You lose someone, you gain someone change of uh, not only profession or workplace, but even city, perhaps. Then the therapist should uh, be, you know, just kind of around and should say, uh, I am there with you. 
and uh, give more handing, hand holding. Uh, but Dr. Mehta, if you allow a question for everyone who has logged uh, in, uh, the song Main Yehi Hoon, a beautiful Bollywood song, uh, one of my favorite actors. So which movie is it from and on which actor is it uh, filmed? So a question for everyone who is logged in. Main Yehi Hoon. Three simple Hindi words. I am here. That's all the therapist has to do. And that's all you have to do. Even if there are ups and downs, twists and turns, things will take care of themselves. The therapist doesn't have to fret. Nobody has to lose their blood pressure or cool or calm. Right. Very well said. And I think uh, the audience is thinking about the song and uh, you know which movie it is from. Uh, we'll also be opening it for the audience. Uh, you know, before I have maybe one or two questions in the flow, and then we can open it up for the audience. And as well. the, this, uh, a hint is that the hero's name suggests a happy long life, so that's the hint. A young, handsome hero, just somewhat like Dr. Mehta, uh, maybe <laughs> less handsome, but uh, his name means uh, long life. That hint is good enough. Uh, okay, so. Uh, so with we talk of we also you know from decades like and we'll uh, to wrap this up also we spoke about how you spoke about diversity more than a decade ago and how it has evolved over time we see all the evolution in medicine is also now targeted towards personalized care you know personalized medication We're seeing a lot of um, ventures coming in from a diagnostic perspective also you know gene mapping uh, just last week i saw a full page ad you know for my dna and family dna and personalized care pharmacogenomics in it and multiple things risk factors identification etc uh, when it comes to diabetes care and we've been talking about it all guidelines have also been talking about a personalized care approach you know that the circle everywhere comes saying you personalize the goal for your patient don't stick to a fixed number don't stick to a fixed therapy personalize it to all extent and a lot of this personalization is left in the hands of the clinician deciding at that moment you know and you have uh, a large opd waiting outside we're all pressed for time and you have to take that decision in a very short span of time and is there an easy way where we can think of personalizing this that's part one of the question and part two is how uh, will these therapies the motivational digital therapies uh, help or are a step in that direction as well to personalize this therapy so two questions both very valid the first is that uh, you use uh, simple and sensible methods of uh, personalizing now uh, let's look at it from a biomedical perspective and then maybe from a psychosocial perspective and we'll use the power of three so the easiest is that i divide all my patients into three uh, the catabolic ones the lean thin marasmic malnourished weight loss these are uh, stigmata of insulin deficiency at the other end is anabolic but not healthy anabolic maladaptive anabolic overweight obese with stigmata of insulin resistance in the middle is eubolic e eubolic they do have uh, diabetes but otherwise the rest of the metabolism is normal so this is what i do in the opd and when you look at the cluster based phenotypes and all practically that's what it is it is just the power of three so catabolic will need insulin Avoid giving high doses of metformin. Avoid SGLT2 inhibitor and uh, GLP-1 RA. They are not meant for frail people. Once you have nursed your patient back to the eubolic state by giving insulin, you can always uh, de-intensify and de-escalate and see what happens. Eubolic, use normal therapy the way the guidelines tell you. And for maladaptive anabolic, avoid high doses of insulin. Do prefer GLP-1 RA, whether oral or injectable. Both are available in the country. SGLT2 inhibitors, metformin and acarbose or voglibose. So that is the phenotype based. A uh, psychosocial kind of a uh, uh, triage which I, which I do is uh, uh, Tamsik, Rajsik, Satvik. Now this comes from the Bhagavad Gita. It is also in the in Ayurveda. Actually in Ayurveda also you have a phenotypic classification, Vat, Pit, Kaf. Vat is catabolic. Pith is eubolic and kafaj or kaf is maladaptive anabolic. That is for phenotype, the three dosh theory. The three gun model, 
uh, which actually was first uh, expounded in the Bhagavad Gita. This divides all people into Tamsik, Rajsik, Satvik. So when the person comes into the OPD and the family walks into the OPD, you just figure out what they are. Now, 80% of all people will be Tamsik. Given a choice, I would also be Tamsik. Lazy, lethargic, not wanting to work, uh, finding excuses not to work. That is Tamsikta. So these are people who are apathic, apathetic. They have lost out on all hope. So the therapist has to, you know, pull them up, you know, uh, uh, um, energize them, enthuse them, fill them with optimism. There's no point in scolding such people and no point in scaring them about the uh, possible uh, disadvantages of not treating diabetes or obesity. Here you have to give, uh, you, ha you have to give optimism. You have to en add energy. Uh, right? Uh, use humor to break the tamsikta. Look at how coaches work with their wards. One of my favorite coaches is Mr. Manpreet Singh. He is an uh, India player for Kabaddi, uh, Asia gold winner. And now he is a coach for Haryana Steelers. Now, this year when the uh, Indian Pro Kabaddi League began, Haryana Steelers was right at the very bottom. But by the end, he had put this ragtag, very young boys from across India, from all across India, but playing for Haryana. He had made them such a cohesive unit that they had reached number two. They lost finally to Pune, to Maharashtra. But uh, next time we'll win, certainly. So see the power of coaching. So that is what you need for tamsic people. And the trick is, you have to do that soul searching and soul signature. Is the guy tamsic or not? At the other end is uh, Rajsik people. Rajsik are kind of hyper aggressive people. They want everything in life. They want it right now. Uh, they will come to you, barge in, get all the tests done. Let me do everything today. And tomorrow they've changed their mind. Tomorrow they are pursuing another dream. So these guys, you have to calm down. You have to slow them down. No point in fighting them, in arguing with them. Just calm them, slow them uh, down and teach them that it's a marathon race we have to run, not a 100 meter dash when it comes to managing obesity. In the middle, you have Satvik people. Satvik people are kind of relaxed kind of guys. So, but uh, I don't get too many of them in my OPD. But Satvik people, you, uh, Satvikta, the English words would be equanimity, equipoise, balance, uh, cool, calm, contented, these kind of guys. But there are not too many in the OPD. With Satvik people, you behave in a Satvik way. So again, sorry, Dr. Mehta, short question, but a long answer. But my long answer, let me summarize now. I do a triage physically. I do a triage and I put all my patients into catabolic, maladaptive anabolic and eubolic. I also do a biomedical, a biopsychosocial, uh, psychosocial triage of my patients and the family. And I categorize them at that moment in time as tamsik, rajsik or satvik. So these are just two things which I do. There are multiple now permutations, combinations, but these uh, two uh, classifications or these two diagnoses, they help me decide my talking therapy, the way I will counsel, and they help me diagnose my tablet or technique therapy, what kind of tablets or injections I'm going to offer. So it's as easy as that, Dr. Mehta. I didn't take yeah. long. <laughs> you make it long. You make it sound very easy. Uh, but I'm sure, I hope uh, people follow it. And uh, to some extent, you know, it helps them because you're eventually all working for better patient outcomes. And, you know, even all clinicians need that little hand-holding uh, so that they can, you know, push the patient in the right direction as well. So it's, it's like you said, the power of coaching. So, you know, if they are coached, we are doing a train the trainer kind of thing, right? If they are coached well, they're going to coach back to the patient. There will be variations. Today, your patient may be in a very satvic or angry mood. Tomorrow, he may be the calmest guy in all. <laughs> we ourselves also change. At some times, I'm satvic in the OPD. Other times, I'm hyper. And right. there are times when I'm also fatigued. Uh, so I become tamsic. So you have to sort of have that insight and take care of yourself as well. So whoever is coming to you, uh, do the best possible for that patient at that time. Uh, I am reminded of this uh, quote. This is from, so I am an alumnus of uh, Christian Medical College, Ludhiana, uh, one of the oldest medical colleges in Asia. Uh, our founder principal was Madam Dame Edith Brown. Uh, her motto was, 
my life, my work is for a king. So by king, she meant Jesus Christ. By king, we can choose to mean anything in power, any spiritual, any higher authority. So what Dame Edith Brown taught us was that each and every person coming to your OPD is a king. When you are serving that patient, don't think that you are serving someone from maybe uh, the poorest uh, hamlet of Gadchiroli district, or maybe the uh, from the richest and the most posh area of South Mumbai or South Delhi. Don't think of that. Treat everyone as an equal. Treat everyone as a king. You do not know when that higher authority is walking into your OPD and seeing what you are doing. So the same way, if you were to worship, that's assuming that you are a spiritual person and you do your best while worshiping, you do your best at that moment in time. Similarly, you do your best at that moment in time for the person who is coming in. So when uh, towards the end of the day, I am tired, I am fatigued. I remember Dame Edith Brown and then that gives me energy. It gives me that uh, power to you know go on for another few minutes, another few patients, and then that's okay. And everyone who is logged in today, like I said, Monday, so it's uh, my work is for a king. We are learning, we are work working. It's like a pilgrimage. It's like we are learning so that we can help other people. So that's why the energy and enthu is there. Right. No, absolutely. Very well put. And uh, it's enthused all of us, uh, the way you spoke. And now I'll open it uh, for the audience. It's a golden opportunity to you know uh, ask Dr. Kalra about all your doubts that you may have uh, on this topic today. And feel free, you can either put them in the chat box and I will ask on your behalf or you can uh, simply unmute and uh, you know, put forth your question, Dr. Khan. Thank you, Dr. Uh, sir, I am Dr. Arpan Mitra from Kolkata Municipal Corporation. I went to Delhi for cardiometabolic you tour. You, you, met, yeah, we, you, yeah, you in, and today, my, you know, I have changed my lifestyle and uh, my central obesity has gone down, you know, within three, four months, I have lost approximately, you know, eight kilo weight. And really? I am now committed to lifestyle. I mean, there is no bigger, you know, your meeting with you was the greatest behavioral therapy. Even more than anything, you know, it's, I will never forget. Even today I was discussing that, you know, meeting with you was, you know, God telling me to meet you and learn from you. I will forever be indebted to you, sir. You are very kind, sir. Thank you for your kind words. Hello. Namaskar, sir. Namaste, namaste. Dr. Rajiv Gupta, I am Meerat Sehu. But right now, I am talking from Boston, United States. I have got a lot of opportunity to meet you and I have learned a lot from them. Unfortunately, today I have missed your talk. टॉक थोड़ी सी मिस कर गया लेकिन पहले मैंने आपकी काफी टॉक सुनी है और उनका ये असर ये हुआ कि लाइफस्टाइल मॉडिफिकेशन से मैंने देखा आई एम डायबिटिक सिंस लास्ट 25 इयर्स और मेरे ये जेनेटिक प्रॉब्लम होने की वजह से ग्रैंडफादर फादर के बाद मेरे पास अभी आई है लेकिन मैंने देखा कि रादर देन यूजिंग मेडिकेशंस मैंने ऑलमोस्ट कोई ऐसा मेडिकेशन नहीं है जो इंडिया में अवेलेबल हो जो मैंने नहीं लिया लेकिन spikes they keep on coming post prandial hyperglycemia it kept on coming day in and day out but that was bothering me and since i have changed my diet and exercise it has gone down and i have gained a lot so thank you very much for your time to time uh, advices and of course short videos which i have seen which are always posted on the youtube Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Namaste. Namaskar, sir. Namaste. Dr. Mehta, aapka bahut dhanyabad. Thank you so much. Uh, I just want to know, I should go for single uh, patient uh, counseling session, say on a Saturday or Sunday, or shall uh, combine seven, ten people? Because some questions are common. Yeah. Some people are satvic. Who can be clubbed together? Some are tamsic, or some are uh, you know different category. That is number one question. So how do you tackle this? Uh, because time is always a constraint. Right. Sir, in our OPD we have tried group sessions, but they haven't worked. The reason is that the heterogeneity is too much in the OPD. There are uh, though Haryana is supposedly a small state, but there are some people who speak Hindi, others Punjabi, others Haryanvi. 
then uh, different uh, different classes of people they don't want to sit with each other actually so that is an issue that we face so finally even after trying for some time we just stopped so it has become individualized again but uh, from merit uh, i have learned from a doctor called dr sunil jindal uh, he is an infertility specialist and uh, he has got this series of videos all 3 4 10 10 minute long videos so the videos are numbered and marked so you know he the patient comes and asks questions so he is able to tell them why don't you watch video 1 3 and 17 so i think that is the way he works that is something we can all do in our uh, opds and uh, i am also hoping to be able to start that so at the most your patient will have like dr rajiv said uh, like you said 15 20 30 frequently asked questions will be there it won't be too much so you just record the answers to them on video or audio or on paper whatever you feel comfortable with if you don't want to do it yourself you as we surf the net we can you know choose yeah that's a video which will suit you that's a video which may not suit you so i, so I think yeah. it's a good way to go about it would you, would you allow if i do a one to one to keep a time bar because people don't want to go so can yeah. we keep people session 15 minutes today then come some other day because there are many people who want this so sir we actually do even shorter than that because the rush is so much in the opd now if you want to complete the entire curriculum in one day it will not be possible even if we complete patient will have forgotten half by tomorrow so we yeah. just follow a general rule uh, uh, maybe two do's and two don'ts so in diet to do's to let us say i give two don'ts don't take salt don't take ghee that is incomplete patient will say then what do i do sir there is nothing left to cook with so the answer is do drink butter milk and you can take coconut water up till such and such a limit depending upon your potassium and urea so uh, even 5 6 minutes should be fine and with each patient sir uh, like we were using so many analogies so many uh, so many ways of motivation any one or two each time something positive something negative and you leave the rest for next week can i uh, take one or two more minutes sure, certainly sir okay see one thing which i tried in last maybe last 10 15 years initially was in the morning i used to call people at 5:30 Said, come, we will walk together, and then I would talk. Sometimes I'll show them exercise. Sometimes I'll talk about food. But it became a problem because then there will be somebody telling the other one, "Ki tum hato yar, hamko bhi puchna hai, tum jao." So it became uh, very annoying. Uh, so that was one problem. Second is, I have tried now in my patient asking them to stop eating after sunset, and I have found that many of them. after one month then they are more agreeable to uh, modify their uh, i mean restrict their portion size and eat slowly that is one i have gained in in the last couple of months that i have tried so that is a thought i'll tell you so what is your opinion on this time in rain that uh, eat for 8 to 10 hours in the day time do not eat 4 hours before going to bed next thing you start only after 8 am i agree with that sir for type 2 diabetes and for obesity this is a very good uh, idea only we should not recommend it to people with type 1 diabetes or with pancreatic diabetes or with gestational diabetes but for type 2 which we are speaking about today or diabetes sir it's a very good idea thank you sir thank you very much you need motivation as well and sir the motivation i get is from my friends and colleagues so uh, like these days dr navneet agarwal he is a diabetologist at gwalior in madhya pradesh he takes care of me so he is my you know digital support so so dr sunit verma is a diabetologist in panchkula he takes care of me dr hitesh punyani in new delhi so uh, this is this is the kind of uh, social support and soul support network which i have got so they they are all younger so they are not able to pull my ears the way dr rajiv gupta would or the way dr bharat would but they don't pull my ears but they do it softly and uh, they make sure i am on track so uh, for us also as physicians like dr arpan said it's good that we reach out we meet other physicians and uh, use them as a soul support as a ul support sir in doha the a stands for abdominal obesity okay <clears throat> i am actually has said in kolkata municipal corporation people have doctors are taking inspiration uh, from me so they are asking me what did dr kalra tell to you they are asking i am telling that is the secret so uh, sir yeah. panta bhat 
and uh, my bengali assamese is not very good but there is one saying that uh, when you eat pandabhat you become like a tiger so if either dr bharat or you could tell that you tell that to everybody <laughs> there is a saying in bengali i think yeah yes sir i don't eat it but no. actually sir if ideas are very contagious if i can it's it's no you know it's a normal bmi should be an ideology like if i can see that i can change myself so i can only then only i can inspire people they know that i was very fat with central obesity what has happened that you know my central obesity is going down my weight is good going down my muscles are building so they are taking it positively they have too many questions so it's a good thing i think we have to set role models and you that know Dr. Kalmar, in this same be, case, I would request you to kindly uh, make it a point that some of the physicians who are interested get uh, get a chance to sit together and you know learn some of the things like uh, pranic yoga and a little bit of stretching exercise. All these things need to be little brushed in us. So yeah. someday, somewhere. And even if we are doing a great job, still there is scope for improvement for all of us. So if we, when we keep on uh, talking to each other, learning from each other, that is the way to improve. I think we interrupted Dr. Gupta, sir. Sir, it will, be, it will be a great yeah. service if you, uh, if you uh, make public wo all those short videos which you are going to make. And which it will be quite helpful if we run on our TV, which is uh, most of the time in our waiting room. And uh, we can run it continuously for some time. Yes, sir. We have Dr. Vineet Nair with us as well, Dr. Manthan, Dr. Vineet Shubra. Anything new that you've learned today? Hi, Dr. Kalra. So, Dr. Kalra, I had a question, but a little more, uh, you know, a step away from what we spoke today. So, I am more motivated to look at prevention, right? Attack the problem even before it occurs. What do you think we need to do in terms of changing our environment so that these problems that start with obesity, then progress with diabetes, other liver disease, kidney disease. What should be our message to the public or even to the doctors? We, we know the answers to that is that we are not able to implement. So I think the answer is that we need not only uh, individual personalized therapy, but also family and community therapy. So, so through digital therapeutics, we should be able to reach the entire community. And once we do that, then automatically will change. Yeah. Yeah. Advocacy, awareness, these are important things. Uh, we need to work together, I think, to be able to ensure that. Uh, there are many best practices. In uh, Haryana, in Karnal, for example, we have open air gyms. Our municipal corporation does a great job. So we have many parks. In all those parks, they have put basic gym equipment. And uh, early morning, late evening, I, so I see everyone actually using that equipment. Uh, there was a time about maybe 15, 10 years ago in my city when uh, going to the gym was considered, you know, for uh, ruffians and hooligans. Only one particular type of boys would go and all the gyms would reek of uh, tobacco and alcohol. But now in our gyms, you find that men, women, boys, girls from each and every strata of society are there. In the open air gyms, people are there, ladies wearing sari, gents wearing dhoti kurta, and ladies and gents wearing uh, ultra modern wear, they are all there using it. So this is something we can do. Uh, another thing that the Canal Municipal Corporation did a couple of years ago during COVID was Rahgiri. Rahgiri means they would take care of the, they would just appropriate the Rah or the road. So they would designate a few roads early morning, 6 to 8 p.m., just for pedestrian activity and for things like yoga and skating and uh, sports. So, so actually people began going there. They would begin cycling, doing yoga, doing other things, and no cars were allowed on those roads. So these are some things we can replicate across the country. Right. And do you think yeah, patients are now more, you know, accepting the, the wearables, right? We have a lot of smartwatches. Now we have rings. Yes. Are those being accepted in the patient community? Certainly acceptance is higher, especially amongst younger people. And uh, it is good to target them because that is where prevention will have a role. Let us say we uh, focus on a person who is 65, 70 years old. So you can get 10, 12 years of meaningful life. 
healthy life without disability. But if you focus on the 30 year old boy or girl, uh, man or woman, then you can get 70 years of extra life. So, and these are people who accept these variables and actually use them. It's for many of them, it's like a religion now. Yeah. That's another part of digital therapeutics, which we should uh, focus on. And then for doctors as well, uh, I would be the first one to admit I myself am not very, uh, you know, tech savvy or digitally savvy, but this is part and parcel of our continuing professional development. We have to learn all these things. So I, I do try my, my children and Dr. Mehta, they all keep on pushing me and nudging me. So I, I learn one or two new things about uh, technology and uh, digital stuff every day every week thank you dr Kalra. do we have any more questions from the audience okay. uh, dr Kalra, do you advocate that as a physician we should voluntarily go to students of class 10, 12, between class 10 and 12, and talk about you know good dietary habits, exercise, and uh, 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 getting up uh, in the morning and doing some things proactively. It makes a difference. To be honest, sir, I myself am not able to go. I'm just not able to find the time. But my wife does go actively, and she speaks about uh, menstrual hygiene and and you know to the girls about what it is and uh, along with that diet and exercise but if you have that time certainly you should uh, do that this is a request to everyone all physicians across the country do that because you are a role model in whichever city or town or village you are working in and the children will remember they will listen and out of those children who is going to get a nobel prize in uh, medicine after 20 30 years you don't know so you should try and touch as many people as possible i think our role model should be our past president uh, dr kalam saab the, the way he he spent his life just touching children so that touch as much as possible we should do thank you we can is recording, uh, is recording yeah. available of this particular session dr mantra Yes, yes, sir, yes. it is available. We upload it on YouTube as well. And uh, as an attendee, a link will be shared with you. Well. Great. I think uh, wrapping up uh, right on time. So thank you so much, uh, everyone, for attending. Thank you so much, Dr. Kalra. It has been as insightful as always, take a uh, lot of take home messages, a lot of uh, small hacks which we can do in our day to day interaction with patients, with the community uh, in general, and you know, help everybody achieve uh, their health outcomes and make this world a healthier place and uh, go to this mission of everyone becoming fitter and healthier in life. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining and making this interactive. And uh, thank you once again. Everybody. Have a good night. Great, great uh, time spent together. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Namaskar. Thank you, Dr. Arpan. Thank you, Dr. Bharat. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Bye.